beautiful 18th Green at Karsten Creek. That's where we find ourselves today for this edition of TV 31 on 1. It is a new show, but it's still with the same person we've been having a conversation with the last four weeks, and that is the athletic director at Oklahoma State, Mike Holder. When you think about Coach Holder and you think about his legacy at Oklahoma State, obviously the Boone Pickens uh, uh, Stadium, you think about the Michael and Ann Greenwood Tennis Center, you think about Neil Patterson Stadium, O'Bray Stadium. But all of that started at Karsten Creek. His predecessor, Labron Harris, was able to put the money together, the funding together to create Lakeside. That was the first course. Well, Karsten Creek is certainly a legacy that Coach Holder will have for a long, long time. So we began our conversation with Coach Holder talking about a lot of things. Eventually, we're going to get to the fact that he has a, a coaching staff that doesn't include a single female head coach. He talks about that. We talk about who he would want to play for and what coach he would want that's currently on the staff. But we talk also about the praise. He is not a guy that necessarily praises his coaches a lot. And Coach talked about who he called when he won his first championship and how much praise he needed from Coach Labron Harris. Sharing in that national championship in 1976, your mom, dad, Coach Harris, yeah. who'd you call? Who, who, how did, how, what was the celebration like then? It wasn't anything. Why? I don't know. <laughs> it's never, it's, it's, uh, it, it's never like you dream about, you know? I mean, yeah, it was a euphoric, you feel great, you finally did it, you weren't sure you could ever do it. We beat one of the great teams in the history of college golf. They hadn't been beaten in two years in Wake Forest, and it was a huge upset. Uh, but as soon as it was over, uh, I could tell you that there were some things happened that were probably shouldn't be talking about. But uh, oh, now you got to make me ask. Yeah, no, I can't <laughs> talk about that. But uh, you're you're on to the next one, you know. Now I got one. I'm tied with Coach Harris. I want to get more. So and I really wanted to beat Dave Williams. He won 16 of them, and I set about doing that. And I'm I'm disappointed that I didn't get 17. He got a few of them at my expense. The guy was a good coach. And I want to talk about him, but. Um, so when you see Nick Saban walk off a national championship football field and go, hey, hey, coach, you know, what, a, what an effort here. What a, what a job. And he says, yeah, now i got to get to my office and start thinking about next year. Well, yeah, Is there a shame in that, though? No. Seriously? No. You, it, you can't – can you not enjoy it a little bit? Well, the enjoyment's the journey. The, every single day you spend with your athletes so, and the whole so process. Me, and then when you get to the end and you do it, you, that's just affirmation, positive affirmation that the, the processes you're going through is, is good. Now there's ways to make it better. So I'm sure Nick Sadman, as soon as he turns the page, is ready to do some things differently so he can be better the next year. So Mike Holder, the athletic director, let me ask you this. I even said this on my daily show. I actually said this on Steve Daniels' show this week. He said to me, or I, we were just talking about baseball, and I was quoting loosely Josh Holliday. Josh Holliday said, I am not sad, I am proud. Proud of the way this team came together, the team unity that it was. And then he went on to say, we won this season. And I said, I have an appreciation for a coach that can look at his team and say, we got what we really could from this group. Would we have loved to beat Tech and go to Omaha? Sure. Win the national championship? That's what we all dream for. But it never seems to me coaches are ever really satisfied. They never look at that team and go, yep, this team gave me everything, and we finished, and I am truly satisfied. And when they win national championships, if they're turning the page going to next year, I kind of look at that and go, that's sad to me. It doesn't seem to me – now, if you're truly enjoying the journey, then there's a great satisfaction in that. And I appreciate that about you saying that and coaches that can do that. But in today's world, with the pressure and the money and the politics and the television, it doesn't seem to me anybody really enjoys the journey as they should. But, but is that okay for a coach to say, hey, we won the season. Didn't win the championship, but we won the season because the journey was what it needed to be for us with this team this year. Well, do you want your son to play for him? Absolutely. Okay, there's your answer. <laughs> Would you like to play for him? Absolutely. Okay, there's your answer. So, so... There is a, there is an okay with not winning at all. It's not going well. Some, ah, some, some coaches ah. show you know show you that you can win almost all the time. It's, yeah. It's hard in every sport, but 
you you get to a certain level, yeah, you can win almost all the time. But I don't think you necessarily put all your eggs in the win-loss basket. That's uh, not a lot of satisfaction in that. You got a lot of hardware on the shelf. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's all about the memories and the people. And I have seen an ever so, and I don't even want to. I almost don't want to say this to you because it sounds like it's a knock, and it's not. But there's an ever bit so slight change in a guy like John Smith, who at one point was at second place. Trophy goes in the trash. We win championships, or we win nothing at Oklahoma State. That's who we are. And then a few years ago, they finished fifth, and I remember interviewing him and going, Coach, I'm not sure if this would be congratulatory or, or, or a feel sorry, you know, that you guys didn't have a good season. He said, no, we really did have a good year. And to me, that's a growth in maturity, but it's at the, the fear of someone such as yourself going, well, you've lost your fire. If fifth is okay, then you've lost your fire. I guess that's why I, get, I wonder where is that happy medium that – no, I'm not happy with losing and not being number one, but I've also got to understand that, that it's not going to happen every year, and I've got to make sure that my guys, because players are different now, that they understand that as long as they truly do give me what they can, they participate in the classroom, they're not trouble off the field, and they give me all they have and they come to practice every day, I really am okay with them. Well, That's a fine line. Oh, there's two parts to that equation that you're alluding to that gets you the result. You got the coaching part. What do you do with the young men that you have on your team that year? That's one part of it. Mm -hmm. The other part is how hard did you work and how good a job did you do recruiting this group? Because how well you do over here on this hand determines what the upside potential is for your coaching ability to truly shine through. So. You can be the greatest coach in the universe if you don't have talent to work with. You're not going to win at the highest level. Talent will always trump coaching, always. Now, if you have equal talent, close to equal talent, then coaching is really going to shine through to show you who the winner is. So uh, I think the challenge for a, a coach like John, uh, the realization that this was probably as good as we could do this year, okay, I get that. I understand it. Did a great job. That's a whole thing dynamic associated with that we got to do a better job recruiting if you're going to beat Penn State or whoever right now Penn State's setting the standard you got to recruit you got to get the same kind of talent coming in the front door that they're getting if you do that then it's going to come down to who does a better job Cale Sanderson or John Smith I like John Smith if you haven't been to TS Fork at White Barn Estates lately we have an exciting new concept to tell you about it's called Thirsty Thursdays and it includes four courses of the same high quality food as our other nights and some of the best mixed drinks you've ever had. Best of all, no reservations are required. And while you're there, relax with a drink on our covered patio and check out the gift shop with Made in Oklahoma products. Go to tsfork.com for more details and to check out our upcoming special menus. To all of our neighbors, friends, the people we see every day, we come to you today with no news or announcement, but to let you know what's on our hearts. Because quite simply, we feel honored. You're the reason that what we do is so much more meaningful than a job. The reason we believe in the power of investing in tomorrow. But you're also the reason we believe in the power of sharing the same neighborhoods and a loyalty that's bigger than any challenge. So this is simply thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to move forward and grow, but never lose sight of the roots that connect us. As we step boldly into a time of change and innovation, consider this our promise that every investment in our hospital is an investment in our communities. Because you're the reason we love what we do and love where we live. The McCafe is now featuring cold brew coffee and cold brew frappes. Face the day with a cold brew coffee from the McCafe with a rich cold brew coffee blended with ice for a creamy frozen drink that's colder than cold brew. Or refresh with a cold creamy frappe. We start with a cold brew coffee blended ice and topped with whipped cream and rich chocolate drizzle for a great anytime frozen treat. McDonald's in Stillwater, Perkins, Perry, and Cushing. I'm loving it. 
Kent and Barbara Houck have been saying they're a one-stop shop for many years. In 1951, the Houck Agency began insuring Oklahomans and since has expanded to insure people in 11 states across the country. The Houck Agency can find the policy that fits your needs from business health coverage, individual health, home, auto, and long-term health care policies. They have a staff that can take care of financial planning, including retirement and investing. And Barbara Houck has been a realtor for over 35 years, and her contacts helped her buy and sell homes and commercial properties across the state one stop shop the hauk agency 801 south main in stillwater call statewide toll free at 800-543-8588 the hauk agency when experience counts talking this week again our fifth episode of a six-part series with Mike Holder the athletic director at Oklahoma State University and we're at Karsten Creek what a perfect setting to be able to talk about coach will be here for the next couple of weeks but coach and I talked about the fact that he wins a national championship I wanted to know who was the first person he called and what kind of praise did he get from his former coach from his dad we talk about that and the answer, depending on how well you know Mike Holder, may or may not surprise you. Did you at least hug Robbie and say she said congratulations?